Okay. जितना मुझे समझ आता है मुझे तो नहीं लगता कि तुम्हारे यहाँ भी कोई चेंज का ऑप्शन है हेलो 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 सर 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 म्यूट डॉक्टर बलियान सर गुड आफ्टरनून श्रीधर व्यवहार बलियन सर श्रीधर व्यवहार यस कैन यू शेयर मी नाउ यस सर सो गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबॉडी सर गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर साहू आर वी ऑल सेट नाउ नो सर नॉट नाउ जस्ट आई लेट अस ओके वील वेट फॉर योर ग्रीन सिग्नल साहू साहू एम आई ऑडिबल 
మన దగ్గర కూడా బాగా అందుకే నేను తిన్న మాడికి చాలా పెద్ద మాడికి తినకూడదు మధ్యాహ్నం నాలుగు ఇంటి వల్ల తినొచ్చు కదా కట్టిపోయాక నేను తిన్నాను ఆ పెద్ద మాడికి హెవీ అయితే అన్నం అది అందుకే తిన్నది ఇవ్వాలి తిన్నప్పుడు చాలా అన్నం తగ్గించి మోడికి తిన్నాను నా మీటింగ్ ఐడి పాస్వర్డ్ వచ్చి సంగ్ సంగ్ కనెక్ట్ కొద్ది జూమ్ రే కొద్దిగా సెటా ఈ ట్రైనింగ్ డెవలప్‌మెంట్ ఉపర్ వచ్చి ఎన్ఐ ఆ ఓకే
so uh, very good afternoon everyone uh, good afternoon yeah good afternoon sir. i think uh, panelists all panelists are uh, unmuted sir or any any problem no we are good we yeah. need to check with the speakers that yeah, speakers. Uh, are they able to yeah yeah kulkarni sahab is uh, unmuted aap uh, unmute hai aur then uh, and uh, mahapatra sir hai aur prasad prasad mahapatra sir aap uh, unmute kar theek hai okay sir you are okay. yeah. yeah go ahead yeah so uh, now it's 2:31 uh, so very good afternoon everyone and afternoon. this uh, national institute of personal management this webinar uh, with great uh, speakers on this topic we have arranged and um, uh, the uh, agenda is uh, this our national president mr vishesh kulkarni will give the inaugural address on the subject and after that our uh, um uh, panelists dr ak balyan mr rk mahapatra uh, mr vk singh and uh, mr rajapan uh, they will be taking over and uh, they will make the uh, all uh, first discussion by all the speakers uh, moderated by uh, balyan sir uh, i will introduce all of the speakers uh, and uh, for that i request our national president now to kindly give the inaugural address and at the end we will have question answer sessions and uh, panelists will take that i request mr kulkarni sir to thank you dr sahu ji thank you good afternoon to all it's a great Sorry. moment to all of us that nipm is exclusively organizing webinar with eminent speakers like mr Raj ranjan kumar mohapatra director hr indian oil mr vk singh director personnel power grid corporation of india Sri Prasad Rajapan, CEO Zing HR, and our own president, uh, past national president, and role model for all of us, Dr. A. K. Balian, former CEO and MD, LNG Petronet, to share their thought on HR challenges for industrial activities post lockdown, along with COVID-19. It is great opportunity to listen and understand challenges which HR will be facing. in public as well as in private sector organizations it can help all of us to prepare and develop ourselves to overcome such challenges i personally thank you dr p k sahu honorable general secretary for his great effort to organize this webinar nipm is participating in webinar in various forums like asia pacific federation of human resource management bangladesh society for human resource management and many other professional forums also first time all the three professional uh, bodies like nipm nhrd and istd came together and hosted the uh, seminar uh, webinar uh, couple of days before on talent leadership and organization what next insight and opportunities by dev ulrich which happened on 22nd may and the participant was more than 2300 participant it is a kind of first initiative that all professional hr organizations are coming towards for the development of the hr professionals a great great thing great opportunity however today's webinar is more important since it is exclusively organized by nipm i wish a great learning to all participant thank you so much thank you sir thank you very much Uh, before introducing our panelists uh, i request all the uh, participants uh, while uh, listening you please in the, put your questions in the uh, chat box and all your questions will be taken and passed on to the panelists who will uh, give their uh, considered view uh, to make it more effective uh, let's uh, put all our uh, attention on this and um, at the end this entire uh, effort is that we must share the knowledge it's not just another event the uh, uh, the speakers are excellent and they have vast experience and we are going to get benefit out of it and uh, we'll try to though time is very limited then we will make it an effective uh, webinar uh, dr ak balyan uh, widely acknowledged uh, business leader and hr professional across the globe 
is an uh, mtech from iit delhi and phd from germany and has worked with reliance infrastructure limited a group company of reliance ada group and he was ceo over there also and uh, he was also md and ceo in petronet lng limited yeah, and also he worked in ongc as director hr of the company and he was past national president of national institute of personal management and many uh, drastic uh, changes have taken place during his period it gives me immense pleasure in introducing uh, mr ranjan kumar mahapatra he is a mechanical engineering graduate from bits pilani and with a pg pg management in uh, javier institute of from javier institute of management bhubaneswar he joined indian oil in 19 87 and uh, gained experiences on various business aspects including terminal operations supply chain management logistics he is also chairman of lanka ioc indian oil subsidiary in sri lanka and uh, he also headed indian oil mauritius limited also he was one of the chief architect of the auto fuel quality upgrades and bs3 to bs4 programs in omcs india I have pleasure in introducing Mr. Vinod Kumar Singh. He is uh, he is graduate from Delhi University, and then he did his uh, postgraduate management from Javier Institute of Social Services, Ranchi. He started uh, his career in '85 with an MNC, and uh, followed by joining uh, ESUs like NSPC. And in '92 he joined uh, Power Grid, and after served in different levels uh, regional headquarters and all uh, dealing with all facets of hrs uh, he is now uh, director personnel of power grid and may i take this opportunity to introduce mr prasad rajappan he is the founder and md of jing hr a global enterprise cloud hr applications provider aimed at simplifying human capital management he is a firm believer uh, of delivering rather than speaking and uh, promising but he speaks very well definitely positions in mahindra and mahindra earlier and ers and young reliance in business processes engineering change management and sap projects he is a masters degree in hr and operations from mumbai university and uh, did his production engineering graduation so we are all grateful such to such uh, eminent uh, speakers and uh, we must uh, take advantages of this and let's make it a very very learning thing we all are in difficulty times you know india has lost so much of uh, the figures are saying more than 53% of business it has been lost lots of employment has been lost economically we are battered but then we have to live with this corona and earlier we there were jokes also that uh, you try to control it but now it's not uncontrollable it's uh, uncontrollable but we have to live with that and do the industrial activities over to balian sir uh, and uh, the panelists thank you dr sahu once again a warm welcome uh, to uh, the national president uh, mr kulkarni and the eminent speakers uh, other office bearers of uh, nipm dr sahu and all the participants it's a it's a great opportunity for me to really moderate this uh, webinar here and i must um, compliment an ipm for organizing this webinar as all of us know that an ipm is a professional body on hr and business issues uh, and the purpose of this uh, this particular webinar is to discuss uh, what are the challenges that are being faced by organizations what are the hr issues um, and uh, perhaps seek um, advice expert opinion from our expert um panel panelists uh, as to how they have been able to work out and what could be 
the possible way to overcome the challenges, the problems being faced by the uh, corporate world uh, during this time. Um, I would um, uh, make, uh, of course, just a few more points before I request uh, our panelists to first uh, make their uh, general statements, uh, what they find uh, their main issues that they want to list in about five minutes uh, each. And after that, uh, we will uh, perhaps uh, discuss some specific issues, specific uh, problems that uh, the, the uh, 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 companies are facing uh, all over the world, not just in India. So um, just to make a few points here, uh, we all aware that um, this is an unprecedented kind of a situation created by, um, we never expected from a ailment, from a COVID pandemic, uh, uh, a kind of a virus infection can be of that uh, magnitude. Uh, it has impacted uh, over 150 countries out of which uh, some 25 to 30 countries are so badly impacted uh, and, and perhaps the developed world countries are much more uh, impacted uh, because of this. Uh, practically, the business activities have come to a more or less to a halt and uh, badly impacted and we are in for a recession actually. And this kind of a recession, this kind of a scenario, uh, we haven't seen actually, and I must be very candid that in my lifetime, I have never seen such kind of a situation, uh, an external situation, which is impacting the business all over the world in certain countries so dramatically that we have to stop these business activities. We have to also contain people isolate them and, and the such a kind of a restrictions on their mobility is something new that we have experienced. And such extraordinary situations definitely call for extraordinary uh, efforts, uh, extraordinary uh, kind of initiatives to overcome that. We are not sure how long this uh, impact of COVID virus is going to last. Um, we can only make some assessments how much it would impact or has impacted uh, is a matter of assumptions that we can only make. Um, in our country, if you see, uh, one of the indicators have been the PMI, the Manufacturing uh, Purchasing Managers Index. If you just see those figures, uh, in uh, February, it was uh, around 54.5. In March, it became 51.8. In April, it dipped to 27 plus. And in May, while it was expected to uh, gain, it is actually going down much, much, much lower figures. And we know that anything which is below 50 indicates that the entire business is contracting. And there's hardly any, any indicator as of now, which shows that the business is improving. Now, how do we recover out of this uh, recession? Now, people are trying to work out whether it would be a rebound, immediate rebound like a V form, V shaped, or it is going to be a U shaped uh, uh, rebound, or it is going to be an L shaped. If it is L shaped, then we are in real trouble actually, because it's going to be long term damage to many aspects, elements of the business. We feel that the initiatives taken by government, by uh, organizations, um, uh, major NGOs, society, perhaps we are in for a U-shape of um, recovery. And I hope that it, it really happens like this. The focus of business to my mind has come on the survival of the business. How do you sustain the business? We have never seen, I come from an oil and gas sector, we have never seen oil being sold at a negative price, where the cost of production and selling is much more. So people have actually, companies have actually given money that you take my oil also. This is something unprecedented, never seen in the history. I mean, at least we in our lifetime, we have not seen. Such kind of an impact, you can only imagine how much uh, negative it could be for business. Apart from that, 
there are large efforts that how do you maintain your assets and continue working on that and how do you prevent your business assets not becoming non performing assets that's very important some of the businesses have been so badly impacted we all know hospitality or mobility um uh, aviation uh i i have a list uh, we got today only about uh, i think 14 airlines of the world have already uh, applied for bankruptcy and some of them are actually big names so this is the kind of thing other companies are uh having challenges how do you keep your manpower together um yet with no activity how how they are faced with layoffs there are of course pay up pay cuts uh compensation uh, being cut uh, no incentives uncertainty in future and how do you engage people and keep them motivated ready for work i mean these are the issues that the entire business and organizations are facing right now and india is no different so in that perspective where the, the business is really facing very critical issues of survival and sustainability in some of the sectors some bigger companies are able to manage but the worst hits to my mind are the small smes uh, sector where the the workers the small time vendors they are the ones actually who have really got into trouble on this so i think how we can do it how, what are the business issues what are the hr issues and what are the hr initiatives the companies have taken to protect themselves to motivate people to keep their people and keep on the business on continuity some of them we know some of the sectors uh, are sort of fall under the essential services and where they are bound to operate and uh, in this perspective i will request uh, first uh, round of uh, comments from our panelist may i request to mr mohapatra first to please uh, take about make your initial comments of about uh, maybe around 5 minutes and then i think we'll request mr singh for another 5 minutes so and then mr uh, prasad uh, rajapa on that so please uh, shri uh, uh, mohapatra ji 5 minutes the major thank issues what you want to highlight on this thank thank you dr balian thank you very much in fact uh, uh, first of all uh, uh, mr pulkarni uh, president uh, NIPM, Dr. Sahu, and uh, my uh, fellow panelists, so the members who are attending this uh, uh, webinar today, uh, I mean, hearty, hearty welcome from my side, and uh, and I must thank uh, NIPM for organizing this. Uh, I think uh, I must thank Dr. Balian for having given the right perspective in the beginning itself, and. Uh, yes it is an unprecedented situation it is an if it is an unprecedented situation it definitely requires an unprecedented response by each one of us whether it is individually or professionally it requires unprecedented response i think i think this is the time when uh, everybody is being tested whether we survive or we perish so it's it's almost like uh, that sort of a situation right now and again uh, talking about our own areas that is the area of hr i feel very strongly that i think probably this is one of the times i mean there could not have been probably a better time when hr would have been tested and uh, and this would have been so important uh, to work on so keeping this in and this in view i i, I also would not hesitate to quote uh, what uh, dave alrich told uh, day for yesterday that um, i mean a crisis is a very uh, terrible thing to waste we must take the opportunity we need not cry over the crisis we have to also convey i mean convert this crisis into an opportunity so keeping all these things in view my point is that yes industry is facing a terrible time industry is definitely going through a very very difficult time particularly as uh, dr balion was telling few industries like hospitality industry mobility industry uh, they they are facing real trouble uh, trouble types but so is facing many other uh, many many other organizations who are at different levels uh, i mean i understand a lot of startups are facing huge problem of uh, funding i don't know i mean in india itself we understand that almost 90% of startups 
are in the verge of shutdown. And uh, Dr. Valian spoke about aviation industry. Yes, would of the major uh, aviation industry, I mean, aviation companies uh, have already filed for uh, bankruptcy. And that's, I mean, we don't know really how we are going to proceed. But at the same time, we must respond to this challenge well. This also is giving a lot of opportunity. If I put particularly in the three phases, it also it is giving us an opportunity to re, to have a complete relook at these three major parameters of HR, that is work, workplace, and workforce. So my point is that work itself is getting redefined. Technology is coming in a big way into work. I think I think uh, Mr. Prashad will be very happy being from technology side. Yes, it was envisaged earlier, but I think the probably the time has come when technology has to take over our activities in the world. Work from home. How many of us, I mean, particularly like industries like ours, when, whenever we used to talk about work from home, I mean, I have been advocating it for quite some time now, almost two years have gone, but everybody was telling it's not possible. Dr. Valian will know that he has been from oil and gas industry. Everybody says, no, it's not possible. I'm not talking about the people and the people who are working from our refineries or our uh, uh, depots, terminals, or aviation fuel institution. I'm not talking of that. They have to operate there. But we are also talking of 40% of the people who are operating from administrative offices. Can it be work? Can it be work? So work itself is changing. Then we come to workplace. Uh, although, I mean, I have been telling, I mean, whenever we are talking in our groups also, social distancing is a bad word to say, actually. It's physical distancing, not exactly social distancing. We do not want to be away from people socially. We, the distancing, the physical distancing has become a big norm now. And then it will remain. It is not going to go away soon. So workplace design itself, hygiene has become a big concern at every place. So workplace design itself has to change. I think... If most of the companies are now re having a relook at their brick and mortar structure for their administrative offices. I think if we have 50% of people working from home, so why do I require so much of space? So this is the second part where uh, also we have to concentrate. The third one is workforce. That's my manpower. That is human resources. How, you, how do you keep them motivated? How do you keep them engaged? What sort of work should be given to them? How they have to deliver uh, in this period? I mean, I mean, not only this period, in future as well. Uh, when we talk of workforce, uh, although it may be a bit early to point on that, but the, let's say the, the issue of uh, this migration, which is a reverse migration, which is happening, it has a huge take on most of the projects that is being undertaken by most of the companies. How do we really do that? I mean, talking to somebody, I, I, I told, I'm also looking at this as an opportunity because if reverse migra migration is coming, what does it make, become? It becomes that local workforce will be now more available for local projects, but they are not skilled. So that is that giving me a lot of scope for skilling? Can I improve my skilling uh, interventions so that I, I make the local people skills to take up any projects which is happening locally? So uh, to I mean, just uh, to start with, these are the three fundamental three areas on which I think I think all of us uh, sitting here, all the we all are leaders are uh, at our places. We have to focus on. I think that's my initial take, Dr. Balian. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mahatra. Very relevant. I think uh, uh, you're right. I think uh, the way we would be undertaking business in future may be in a different form now. There's a great amount of learning that is coming up. And it is slowly being imbibed by all sectors of the industry and, and evolving new ways of working and, and developing. You're right, I think, on that. Um, just you go on, I, I just want to add one sentence. Yeah. Uh, you told about learning. I also want to warn everybody, the learning from these times, we should not think that this is only learning from the COVID period. No, it has to be continued. This learning, what we are getting now, must be utilized in future and that's Quite my right i mean this is only only hastened the pace of change to my mind and then uh, i think we need to really uh, keep on reinventing ourselves thank you very much for your initial comments uh, may i request uh, mr vk singh to to save your your opening remarks mr singh so very good afternoon to all and uh, i'm particularly mm -hmm. thankful to nipm for giving this uh, opportunity uh, 
thanks to Mr. Sahu, Mr. Balya, Mr. Mahapatra, and Mr. Prashant. Uh, as far as this issue is concerned, I think Mr. Balyan and uh, uh, Mr. Mahapatra has already laid emphasis as to how it has impacted us. It has impacted us in the external world as well as the internal at workplace. So, uh, as an HR, I mean, the, the three dimensions are primarily affected. It's a physical, emotional, and operational. And operational, I mean all aspects like engineering, construction, design, commercial, regulatory, and whatnot. What for each organization, these things are badly impacted. And uh, that need, that a rethinking need to be made in terms of all procedure, policy system. That's very important. And uh, as I said, just uh, setting the tone for the talk. And I mean, uh, we cannot wait for things to get better, easier. Whatever we need to do, we need to do right now. I mean, the, this COVID situation, uh, I, like I started, it, it has impacted us physically and emotionally as far as HR is concerned and operationally. So uh, even in this, uh, for uh, COVID, such as a negative emotion, which has, uh, but there's one emotion which is encom encompassing almost all everything, even your, our happiness and sadness are all wrapped with this emotion. So our thinking is built around that. So important thing is that uh, even in the negative situation, you can find positive because even such a situation has created many a such a thing where like what we could learn in five years, we have learned in five days. I mean, that's a, that has been made possible. So it's this crisis should not go waste. And uh, like Mr. Mahapatra said, this learning must continue what we, whatever we have learned. We can learn to do with less people. We can learn to do with better technology. We can learn to improve our workplaces. We can redesign our workplaces. And lot many th things we can do uh, absolutely in a new way. So in my view, as an HR person is concerned, we need to, in the second aspect, I'll discuss about how we need to challenge it as an HR person. But right now, uh, the great place are those who are safe place, actually. The safe, safe places are the greatest uh, workplace. So important thing is that as far as phys uh, the physical threat is concerned and emotional, we need to create a safe workplaces. Safety is the, uh, I think it's survival of the safest is now. And uh, safe place, creating safe place is the most important thing. That is I'll predominantly emphasize on, which I'll uh, talk upon about second time when I get a chance about how to deal it with uh, HR. Thank you, sir. Sure, uh, Mr. Singh. I think uh, you rightly said a, a safe place is the best place. You know, that's the priority today. That we yes. create that confidence yes. and, and the belief in the employees that uh, their work environment is absolutely safe so that they can work freely on this. I think that's very important uh, uh, input. Um, I'll move on to Mr. Prasad uh, Rajapan. Um, uh, he brings in a different perspective. Um, I see that while we are the two panelists are from the public sector background, um, Mr. Prasad uh, comes from a very vibrant uh, industry, a, a private sector. So how do you see your initial remarks, uh, Mr. Rajapan? Uh, thank, you, um, thank you, Mr. Balian. I think first of all, thank you for NIPM. And I feel a very odd man out being on the panel with a lot of big followers here. Uh, let me try and put my view in as a technology player. Like I said, uh, 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 Zingita, we are a technology platform player. So we interact with more than 500 customers and we get to opportunity of seeing their challenges and trying to be part of it. Just to put a, on a, just to start my note on a lighter note, I think this is what is happening to all of us before Corona and after distancing. The work-life balance as I think change to video call and voice call balance. And I think before, sometimes we were planning weekends. All of us, all of us have now lost track of what is happening, which day of the week is it. Yeah. And I remember earlier days, people used to look for, asking for a minute, or do I have a minute to have a quick word? And nowadays, I think for most of us, it's like, I'm sure you're free, just come on a call. So life has become very uh, uh, dynamic nowadays. If you look today's talk, we, we, we talked to various customers, both public sector, private sector. If you see 
the buzzwords happening in the uh, in the not buzzword but the concerns happening in the industry is like what is going to happen to business continuity what is going to happen to, to employee safety like just uh, kissing was saying safety is become is going to be uh, important what is the response process we don't know corona as a invisible enemy what is the response process going to happen how how am i am taking to give uh, protection to the employees and their families so those are the things which has been uh, uh, asked by the uh, industry and if you just collect, collect something out if i look at business continuity employee health and safety response process and i think one other thing also is the customer retention growth though i'll not delve on that today but i think that has been very big concern for most of the companies especially the private sector and startups so so to look at uh, all those uh, parameters i think the people are today worried about productivity skill upgrade ensuring transparency and can i show concern for my people i think from a finance perspective people are saying can i convert my fixed cost to variable cost how do i collaborate the question to my my friends from hr as hr managers and as business managers what can we do how can we take care of the employee safety how do i improve productivity how do i ch uh, change the fixed cost to variable cost how do i ensure transparency i think these are all the things buzzword which is happening the i think and i think to my mind this is the best time for an hr team they have always been talking about as business partners today they have been pushed into the center of the well and saying here is the time to show that human management is a key for in such a crisis so after all this initial euphoria of work successfully working from home many companies have done that successfully implemented systems i think let us keep technology aside how do we take care of our team and ourselves how do we face reality is like loss in revenues there's a huge debate between uh, job cuts and uh, salary cuts how do you as hr people manage that i think those are the challenges i think we need to address as industry uh, stalwarts and if you see the covid what has covid done it has impacted a huge way of working all of a sudden the individual performance is now no longer important it is team performance department performance is i think uh, getting less important than com uh, company performance is becoming important and centralized authority is becoming to distributed authorities and one thing i don't know whether you have experience all of us have realized that we could do more with less i think it's been there a lot of flap in the earlier way of working and the and the, in these times the true character of a person as well as of the organization will be highlighted so all of us need to be watchful what do we behave how do we take care of our people because these small incidences will determine the people will judge what kind is the character of the company like someone was talking of productivity i think we there's a need to re even redefine productivity productivity i think we are many times confused between productivity and activity i think we will have to as businesses and as a char people try to go to fundamentals and say let us let us do some what we call as outcome mission let us do only activities which gives outcomes let us not be busy with activities which for the sake of being active we do a lot of workshops on lean lean thought processes and you have seen that many processes are almost 80 90% of the activities are actually not leading to a purpose but they are busy with activities covid has really given us an opportunity look at those things and say can i change those processes i think i feel personally feel covid has put to a great level up you know while like people have been saying i'm not saying it's an opportunity but it's a great level up people were ahead in the race and if people were lagging behind or all standing at the same start point that could be bad news for many but if you see from a different perspective it's a equal opportunity for everyone and as individuals as enterprises are we seeing this as an opportunity and this opportunity will come only for people who are agile and adapt and you just make it happen so currently what are the challenges i think uh, like all the speakers said the challenges are predictability and constraints constraints in our mind and predictability is what is going to happen i got some some philosophy in terms of you could you could adopt to be a three types of personalities you know type a 
B or C. The way I define A is atheist, not from a uh, religion perspective. But I will always keep saying I cannot grow due to constraints. There is lockdown. There is no, no the uh, banks are not giving loans. Uh, uh, employees are not coming. I can't cut costs. Government putting restrictions. Those are type A people who say I cannot go due to constraints. Or you want to be type B who says I will grow in spite of constraints. They are the believers. They will believe in themselves. They will have self confidence and they'll make self made person who will fight all those things. I'll grow in spite of constraints or will better the choice is type C. Type C are the counters who say I shall grow because of constraints. Actually India has an opportunity to revamp its economy sort of thing like a Prime Minister said give rise to MSMEs to declutterization of the cities is a huge opportunity. The question is all of us we have to decide what do you want. That's not my opening remarks. And as a uh, company, I think what we have done as our contribution to, and we have seen a lot of stress in industries. So we have just thrown upon all of our technology tools like face recognition, geofencing, multi-level headers, migrant people, what, how do they take care? We have pushed all those tools in the market as, as our contribution towards the, the situation free of cost. You know, that's, that's a small thing we could do because we have seen of police officers, army, medical paramedic people, all staking their life. We thought as small players, I think we should also start contributing to what the industry does. Going to Mr. Balian, this is my opening. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. It was wonderful to really very uh, uh, focused presentation, a quick presentation. I think very valid point. I must compliment that uh, uh, your organization is taking uh, uh, this as an opportunity, and I think that's the right message that we need to convey as an HR professionals also throughout the industry that uh, COVID provides the HR team the best opportunity to demonstrate that they are actually driving the business, not just the partner or, or, or a department, they are driving the business actually. And this is the opportunity to my mind. Thank you very much. And I take it from this point of view that... Uh, this is the best time that you said, and I, I also like your um, uh, new terminology, outcommission, that uh, not just the activity, it, what needs, and we, we all know what gets measured, you know, can be sort of uh, very well mapped, you know. So I think it's the activity wise and the productivity under the particular scale, that should be the uh, focus. Uh, for all of us to really have measurable output. And that's, that's what you said, Mr. Very well. Uh, well, um, friends, we'll move on to um, um, a, a cycle of some questions. I, I, I thought it would be uh, interesting to provoke our panelists uh, with some uh, questions. So I'll start with, uh, again, Mr. Mohapatra. Uh, Mr. Mohapatra, we know that uh, you belong to an organization which is a Fortune 500 company. You have the largest spread, not over over the country, but beyond going beyond the country. Such a vast uh, this thing. You are perhaps also, to my mind now, is still the biggest refiner and marketeer of petro products in the country with such a network, and also falling under the essential services. How have you ensured that your operations uh, go on smoothly? Uh, can you share how you manage your workforce, whether it is a secondary workforce or whether your regular employees? Uh, how have you managed? What were the specific steps that you think were uh, important and you did that to be able to successfully manage them? You need to you need to uh, un unmute yourself, please. Yeah. No, not yet. Mr. Mahapatra's. Uh, no, 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 it is done. No, yeah. Yes. Post tried, it has been muted. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your kind words about Indian oil. Yes, uh, we are spread all over, and uh, we are also spreading our. Uh, wings uh, beyond uh, the shores but 
problem is that when you have such a large organization when you have uh, almost 33000 employees more than four and a half lakh uh, uh, i mean secondary workforces which is spread all over the places where you have your i mean i always call i mean we have been talking about uh, policemen we have been talking about uh, uh, the doctors nurses who are the covid warriors even i all i mean we always considered our delivery boys our retail outlet uh, customer attendants are equally the covid warriors in fact i was sharing today with another group that uh, today every day my my uh, delivery boys are touching almost not less than 30 to 40 houses every day that means and and these houses are not repeated and in a in a in a sequence of events in a in a, in a let's say in a month or so he is uh, he is connecting with thousands of houses so that apart so that becomes a, a big uh, challenge definitely but again as we all discussed in the beginning that unprecedented uh, uh, situations will uh, require unprecedented response we focused on three uh, three fundamentals i mean we thought uh, that th these three things will really work for us whether it is our internal stakeholders or external stakeholders uh -huh. number one what we wanted i think uh, they, during this period there were galore of uh, informations coming from every every ways i mean whether it is uh, i mean uh, if i call it jokingly whatsapp university or from other sources lots of informations were coming so we decided that we must give authenticated information authenticated guidance to our own employees as well as to all our stakeholders so we we i mean uh, immediately on this covid 19 when it uh, struck uh, we had a hypa committee which was uh, constituted under my leadership but we had our uh, ed hs is the uh, uh, health safety and environment as our cornerstone and we had ed hr as a convener so this group met every day we have been meeting continuously for almost last 65 days we have been meeting we decided that we will take out advisories which will be sent to all our stakeholders and these advisories comprises of all the guidelines so this is one authentic information second uh, second one was that connecting with people i think this was also another element again uh, for hr it's always necessary that we connect with people but if you connect with people during adversities it makes more impact and it it also people and people should not be in any sort of uh, uh, sort of confusion or del dilemma at this point of time so so second area where we concentrated was on uh, uh, connecting with people including my chairman or board of directors even down below our uh, second run third run leaders they all started connecting with people physical connection was not possible but through virtually they started connecting with people the last one was the most important was keeping people engaged and keep people motivated again we had this peculiar problem which i was telling in the month in the beginning that uh, we had 60% of our people working from our refineries or pipeline tops or or uh, locations uh, supply locations which are spread all over we are another 40% people who are working from administrative office how do you keep both these groups engaged and both these groups uh, motivated uh, one uh, small uh, intervention which we had done earlier came in lot handy for us uh, we had started uh, an ambitious program we called it e learning uh, i mean we had named it as swadhyay this is a e learning program which had been created in house and we had the 500 such modules ready i'll tell you dr balian on 23rd march that is it was inaugurated it was launched on 1st september which happens to be our indian oil day 2019 up to 23rd march we had 10200 courses completed and can you just believe today as we sit right now i mean people have completed 5 lakh 50000 courses i mean each module that means in effect we have currently added a few modules the modules have become 500 on an average 1000 people in my organization have done one module each so i mean this is one engagement i think probably which not only united which which also gave everybody an option to learn and uh, i mean just before concluding i'll say ki five things i i thought is a learning which will be very important for us to take it forward 
one is we have to be we have I mean dexterity which which has to be displayed at any point of time adaptability which has to be also taught which has to be seen which has to be always uh, focused on agility which has to be there only those agile organizations agile people agile employees will survive such type of uh, i mean such type of situation which is uh, currently happening and the organization need to be resilient so and to conclude finally which we have been always telling empathy has to drive every activity of ours be it in any organization empathy has to drive and it has to fly from top to bottom to the last mile of our stakeholders it has to drive it has to go go up to that level and uh, that that's what i think uh, this is what uh, uh, has been our force or our has been our uh, way of uh, uh, i mean way of responding to this critical situation and i am sure it has worked because being an essential services suddenly you find your uh, lpg sales increases by 16 to 18 percent because they as they say everything is under lockdown and the canteen i mean the kitchen is not on lockdown at all and it is an over duty right now so we have to meet that requirement so this this these are the things i think we have worked on and probably this has worked well till now we have to see further we have to chop and further further thank you thank you just for your one one or two clarification these uh, uh, e learning uh, uh, modules uh, uh, were basically on their own uh, area of uh, work or some general information on covid also no uh, what uh, we what we we had started this actually on uh, i mean i was uh, telling uh, we had launched it on 1st september we had taken on all the activities that we do so okay. uh, as an organization we have refining marketing uh, pipelines uh, research and development uh, business development hr finance every area so respective uh, areas uh, we had taken okay. covid we have not yet added because this came in 23rd 23rd of march the lockdown came okay. and we have not added any course on that these courses have been done i mean people having finance background have done courses in refineries and bd that that's something very interesting i mean uh, given a chance sometime i can give the learning from this has been tremendous for all of us okay just one more question mr mahapatra i mean as a as a all of us are perhaps uh, clients to indian oil uh, when we buy your uh, petro products uh, many of your outlets are not owned by you so there are several i don't know what is the ratio but uh, uh, some are owned by you and you have your own employees as the front person interacting with the public and the others are licenses that you ask them to operate <coughs> on your behalf you think there was some kind of a difference in the productivity or way of working or problem or issues uh, okay let me clarify also let me clarify actually the percentage of what we call it also company owned company operated cocos uh, this yes. this is very low i mean it is at at the level of 0.1% of the total number of retail outlets we have almost 27000 retail outlets as of now out of which we have around 170 or odd cocos where we operate our people are posted and we are operating so most of our uh, units are uh, franchises uh, i mean they have different types of franchises of course there but they are mostly franchises which is being operated by a dealer and the dealers own people are there so there has been no differences in productivity in fact i am surprised that many places the dealers delivery of uh, this uh, delivery boys or the customer attendants have responded to this situation exceedingly well of course okay. one way we have supported them we have declared an exgratia for all of them uh, 5 lakhs rupees of exgratia we have also covered them under uh, uh, medical insurance each of these people four and a half lakh people we have covered we have tied up with national uh, national insurance and uh, we have covered each of them under uh, this uh, uh, medical insurance for covid treatment and uh, that has given them also a confidence i mean that's maybe that has also really i mean again i was talking of empathy and that was the empathetic activity or okay. empathetic view that we have but anything that you are planning right now for after covid uh, anything that you are preparing your team as a char initiative something new that you are thinking 
Yeah, going by the learnings that we have got from this, I mean, uh, as I was telling on these three things, work, workforce and uh, workplace, lot of activities are being now undertaken. We, we have, as I was telling you that we have realized that we can definitely work from home and we can design our workplace in a way that it becomes more productive and more, uh, I mean, deliveries are more. Today morning also when I was reviewing, I was telling another group, while, while, while uh, looking at all these learnings from these times, we are also realizing maybe somewhere our work assignments need to be more developed. We have created a technical competency framework for each role, but that was still in paper. And this was, this has given us an opportunity to go take it forward, take it forward. We also are now planning that how we can really align our customers with our internal stakeholders at every point of time. And this has given us an opportunity and the technology is also giving us an opportunity. So there are many things to do. I was also sharing that maybe probably three years or four years will not be enough to really uh, finally give results to the learnings which we have done it in the last two years, hey, last two months. Thank you, Mr. Mahapatra. I can only vouch that um... Uh, when I order for my Indian uh, gas cylinder, that is everything is done on online and the boy is there within 24 hours at my doorstep. And I think this is a very, very, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a wonderful system, which is working flawless, you know. Um, Thank you very much. move on to our next speaker, uh, panelist, uh, uh, Shri Singh. Uh, Singh Sahib, you come from, a, again, a, one of the biggest... Uh, power transmission company of the country here and you are also part of the essential services actually as a part of the government's initiative and definition that you need to buy that. So what all uh, you think have been unusual that you had to cope during this time? Uh, some different way of working was there or how do you think that uh, or it was a business as usual? What was different in the last uh, two months, three months time? Mr. Singh, can you hear us? I think we lost him. I think we lost his connectivity, I suppose. I think it's uh, coming back, is it? Yeah, but his duty is a little low. He's there. Um, um, okay, uh, uh, sir, we can go to. I think I'll I'll move Mr. on uh, to Mr. Saad Rajapan. Mr. Um, Singh, Mr. Singh is only giving guarantee of the power, not the Wi-Fi. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, Saad Saab, uh, I mean, your organization, as we saw in the uh, a very crisp uh, presentation, um, is uh, <laughs> Very agile. The last uh, part of it, anyway, I just yeah, yeah. So, I, Mr. Singh has uh, come. Uh, although I'm in power sector, but I'm white. So, as long you can see power, we are there. I mean, that's it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah we are now, 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 okay, now audible. Come back to Mr. Singh. Yes, please. I can yeah. see just one sec. Uh, power, power has gone. come back. Come back. <laughs> I, I, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, uh, that's uh, just one second. I'm on. Am I audible now? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yes, you are audible. Oh, now I think connection lost. Uh, so I think we'll have to then uh, uh, go to Mr. Change the sequence. Sure. Uh, we'll go to Mr. Prasad. Um, Mr. Prasad, once again, um, uh, you can, uh, meanwhile, Dr. Sahu, you can mute yeah, call uh, him. Mr. Singh uh, and tell him that we are, we'll reverse the uh, sequence. Yeah, yeah I will, I, I'll talk to you. Yeah. So, Mr. Prasad, I mean, uh, uh, we see that your organization has really been able to quickly respond to the needs of the uh, present time, crisis time. 
um, how have you been able to do that? I mean, uh, you 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 are um, you have other um, uh, branches of your organization where they work at home, or or it is only the Mumbai office, or how have you been working? What has been the work environment, and how you could? What would you list down help you to uh, quickly develop this uh, response to the crisis? Yep. I think oh, just to clarify, we are um, we have our offices in almost all the cities: uh, Delhi, Bangalore, Delhi, Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai, now in Dubai, Singapore, and all. Uh, but I think what we realized is all of a sudden, not only us, even customers realize that HR is an essential commodity, it's an essential service. So all of a sudden, it moved from a support to an essential service. And what happened is technology. The customer's demand was more early to solve more for control. I want to control the time. I want to control the appraisers. I want to do all those things. All of a sudden, within almost like a day, the control moved to care. Control moved to concern. Okay. So the demands for tools were saying, can I reach out to my 10,000 of my people and know how they are? I've got WhatsApp groups, but I can't make 400 WhatsApp groups. We quickly, within my team, Almost bucks and almost two hour, up to two a.m. in the night, you know, to get those tools up. Within three days, we are up with a survey which can go not only on a smartphone but on an SMS, because we have a lot of people who may not have smartphones. We have to give a solution not only for the elite. So we, we and the customer said, I want to reach out to people, see whether the family is safe, whether they got duration for the next fifteen days, whether the health is safe, and all that we could do is just do that quickly. So what is happening is, um, I think like it's almost like a uh, external country when somebody there's a war, okay, uh, this is not an enemy country, but it's something that all of us citizens, I think, rise. And proud to say my team also just arrived, have risen, and the demands have been huge. People all of us sudden want face recognition without having to invest in a face device. We quickly launched a mobile-based face recognition with AI. Yeah. So I think bots, uh, multilingual. Fortunately, the good part is we already had 26 languages. We had all the Indian languages, including not from not just Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, but Uriya also, Durbani also. So that has helped us to reach out to the migrant people. And the other thing which I've seen is which I really appreciate of corporate India was they started empathizing with people. They started with people, and the other phenomenon which we saw was empathy. Employees started empathizing with the companies, which is very, very, very good for the economy. No longer are people saying companies should do this. I've, I've spoken because we do about 10 lakh employee records processing. There are com employees who say, no, I think we should bother about the company. It's my company. I should take care of them. So okay. some of the people are ready to let go their leave, leave balances. Some of them are ready to leave their incentives. So which is a very good sign happening. There's a kind of a more caring attitudinal changes in the people. Caring, I think people have realized that this is a common, it is not for management or uh, employee. It is not within one company, it is for the entire globe. So that realization, I don't know whether you see in the market, everyone realized it's, it's for the driver, it's for the servant, it is for the manager, director, everyone is same problem. So empathy has come. So some of the technology solutions also like that. We have yeah. employees saying, I want to contribute. Can I give me a tool to do that? And I think we are happy to say that we could, me and my team could really just keep on working and getting, getting there. It's almost so like- your, your HR technology driven tools were developed within this time period of say two and a half months and are ready for uh, sort of can be procured by other organizations and implemented? Absolutely. Uh, see, many of them were the earlier. You know, many of them were the earlier, but now people, uh, the demand has increased now. Demand has increased. Except we have, as a part of our our contribution, next two months, we have given it free to the entire world. So please well, use it. It was, it was expected, uh, Mr. Prasad, that uh, some of the companies which are in the IT technology and this sector would do better. So is it uh, okay if I say, that the business of your company has actually increased during this period? I don't know what uh, uh, the activity uh, engagement has become 200%. Have like you recruited more people 
we we are hiring more people we are hiring more people we are uh, uh, working with partners all those things collaborations have now you are seeing from the you know, how do you take care of those you know uh, specifically that section which uh, whether they can be your employees or, or maybe they can be perhaps more likely customers who do not have smartphones mm -hmm. now how do you communicate how do you have solutions for them so we we have a lot of sms based solutions we have okay including tracking the mobile the uh, non smartphones through the triangulation the tower triangulation okay okay i got companies saying i am worried whether my employees are safe or not whether they are moved from mumbai to wherever the native place or from delhi to native place i want to track them and not track from a control perspective but want to know so we have started sending sms even a reply of sms we can tell them they are in which which town which area which uh, region and that and the surveys and because we have got multilingual now Help desk has become a huge thing. We created a category in help desk called COVID. Within COVID, saying health, uh, family health, and groceries. You know to that extent. And we have seen companies. We have helped companies go through geo fencing, saying this person in your company needs help, and this is the pin code, and these are twenty other people who are staying there. Can you ask them for help? Okay. Okay. And this is all possible through technology, invisible technology. I don't think. I don't think we should. high technology technology should not be high you know it just should be there so you what would be your one suggestion if you want to give it to the across the industry particularly those are very badly impacted now uh, what would be your your suggestion um, we have been trying to reach to the um, uh, arogya setu team to see whether we can integrate with that and uh, there are 2.5 crores people are using it because but all our employees enterprise whether we can link and try and help people to be safe try and help like in our app we have our from a home i can click and know how much far i am from a red zone is it 500 meters or 300 meters we have built the solutions but i think it's a national movement so i think we are trying we are trying to reach out to the pmo also whether we can get access to the linkage to the aryo setu and we want to open it free to the entire nation we don't want to we're not trying to make a money out of it at this juncture we want to just give it to the nation yeah, the, the, of course the, the the purpose is different uh, as you said initially it is more caring now Absolutely. and there is definitely a change in the thought process uh, about that thank you very much mr prasad i'll perhaps come back again uh, i think mr singh are we now all settled with the ah uh, yes set to settle sir okay back. fine i'll come back again so uh, we were just talking that uh, you are one of the biggest uh, power transmission company in the in the country perhaps the biggest you know uh, most of your transmission lines go into remote areas and all and uh, i i know these are major projects which employ not only your regular employees but a large number of um, secondary workforce also maybe contractors their labor and all so first of all about your employees um, how do you manage did you did you um see or issued instructions for not taking up field jobs or or you were working as usual what was the actual uh, i I'll, i'll tell you it's a beautiful experimentation the moment the country was struck with covid but we were we planned it much before the then because we have almost global presence in 20 countries so we knew what is coming forward so we had all business continuity planning from all the department and mm -hmm. as per migrant labor you particularly asked the we at that point of time when the covid struck we were having 35000 crores of work in hand and the construction was on at the, about 150 location in india all spread over all across the country and uh, the the moment it started lockdown started we started then providing them food and uh, good living condition we made them that the living condition would be better than in term in, in time of covid covid because the very high degree of sanitation and was required so we made a good living condition for them provided them food and retain them we could these are this was all migrant labor but we could retain more than 60% of the labor uh, and just because we provided food in time we could uh, retain the and the moment the lockdown stopped we lockdown condition was relaxed we started our construction that is a beautiful thing which happened with us it was a minus csr activity and as regard our agency labor was concerned 
particularly security and uh, sanitation, watch and ward in other areas. And we took them in ours actually. Uh, we had almost, uh, we have more than 250 substation across the country. And we knew that these are the frontline people and uh, instead of keeping them out, we took them inside our station, provided them food, retained them. And over and above, we, especially the agency labor, we gave them 250 rupees per, per day. And this time when the, most of the organization were cutting costs, not paying them, we made paid them 250 rupees per day. So we could engage, I mean, nothing could be, I mean, we are all, all operation because the show must go on. The power is a very essential commodity. So in the operation area, nothing was impacted. We made a backup plan also. For each substation, we had a backup plan. Supposing uh, the worst happened, what would happen? So we created backup plan for each station. So we okay. were, uh, I think advanced preparation was uh, very useful to us. So in such a uh, situation, probably uh, you need advanced preparation actually. Uh, okay. Having footprint in 20 countries, we had enough time to prepare ourselves. And we are also part of the disaster management of the country. We have handled disaster like earthquake in Latour and uh, flood in Srinagar and recently Amphan in uh, Bengal in Odisha. So this company knew as to how to handle the crisis. Actually, that's okay. So my just question is that now you have adopted some different work practices uh, which you were preparing and quickly put it to place. Uh, you think your other HR practices and all would get now updated with the new way of working? So that would be now in future, it would be a, a different normal? Sir, I told you in my initial remark that uh, we decided that because of COVID, entire work uh, place habit practices were changed. So it was very necessary that we, re we revisit all our policies, procedures, systems, and we need to make them fit to the people actually. That's, a, that's a, as an HR perspective, what this talk is concerned. I mean, how you fit uh, HR to the new work situation. So for mm -hmm. that, you need to be adjustable, flexible, and you redefine the policies. And I told you that safe, uh, safety was the biggest in my mind, safety of our people, safety of not only people who have worked with us, who retired. So we took good care of them, immediately started tele telemedicine and all. And uh, you can need not send the bill, you can scan the bill and send. This not only we did for employees, but even for contractor. I mean, we did not, so that they have ease of payment. We told them you scan the bill from any part of the country, send it to us and we we'll release the payment. And, and particularly HR department, we were going full throttle. We all, we did not stop anything, be it promotion, be it transfer. Transfer was also hold, but strategic position, we moved people. And uh, even promotion, there were senior level people. We interviewed them from their home, actually. At India, there was a practice, a big committee used to sit and uh, interview them. We allowed people, one, uh, the committee, eight people sitting at eight location and, uh, and the interviewer sitting at his home, we uh, did promotion exercise, issued promotion order in time. An important thing was the, beside uh, uh, this uh, engagement of people, we, I mean, we were keep thinking, keep exploring, inviting people, because we knew the suggestion can come from anywhere and uh, people were finding their own way of sanitization, I mean, making their work a better place. So we kept talking, discussing with, and uh, we knew ideas can come from anywhere. And uh, as a HR person, uh, you need that, uh, what position you take now is very important. And innovation is a key, small, small area. We, I mean, in some of uh, our substation, people invented their own kind of uh, hand sanitization machine. I mean, some unique, yeah. unique thing. And our CSR also come in a big way. We contributed almost 200 crores in PM care spend. Okay. Until now, we have spent about 30 crores in, uh, for migrant labor, construction labor, and our own agency labor. So it's important when the ecosystem changes. So I told you I need to redesign so, uh, social distancing is possible. And, and the learning was, uh, we, uh, we had a calendar which we came out earlier. And we, we decided that uh, everything will be your operation. No, all training program will take place in time. Another 
during this time we knew that a uh, lot of people were working from home so a lot of initiative is started in learning and we are rolling out program one after another from morning meditation yoga to all uh, hardcore learning and uh, so online and our motto is that what top men in the company is known should be known to the last man in the company that's how we need to communicate we are at the very we appear, like you said we are located in all across india very remote places so communication is a very key for us and for hr it's a very responsible to create system where you have a both way communication ideas come from uh, all across and uh, that is what we did okay just an important thing is i i learned that what we could learn in uh, a lot of five years we could learn in five days actually there is a lot of learning yeah. <laughs> the system i mean people change very fast and this is what we have realized so that and was my created... question that was my question mr singh that uh, yes. uh, you know the top leadership has larger responsibility to steer the organization company in difficult times so my question was that uh, how your top management worked differently in the three months of crisis period what was different that your maybe top leadership i mean how board functioned differently? i i tell you it is another beautiful story the moment lockdown started the, the country went into lockdown majority of our people were working from home but as a board we decided we'll come every day we'll sit uh, one hour every day and during lockdown we had almost two uh, board meeting full length board meeting where we discussed a lot of important issues were held on virtual platform so that is i realize that when a top management has a conviction it has a viral effect and viral impact actually people knew that uh, there are people who will take care of you so important was to make people realize that because i told you it's a 24 into 7 operation and uh, safety is a paramount factor uh, people must feel safe so we did all possible thing to make it a very safe workplace and a lot of relaxation we also provided in terms of policy and it's important thing that uh, when people know that you are cared i mean when you care things automatically follow yeah okay thank you thank you very much uh, for that so um, i think i'll uh, we have uh, now perhaps time for uh, some question answers, answers. Uh, yes sir so i'll make some uh, concluding remarks and then we'll in 2 minutes and then uh, we will uh take up the questions and i'll request my panelist also to participate in answering the question to a uh, few points that i thought are important and i like to point out here at leadership i think leadership is very important for any organization particularly in crisis every employee looks towards the leader as to how he is functioning so that is the kind of thing that goes message goes to that a leader and the crisis needs to really be taking decision and leading from the front there has to be under crisis situation a leadership with compassion that you are able to appreciate your employees problems and all leadership has to be with positive attitude under the crisis if you if the leadership also conducts its way in a very negative way it doesn't convey well to the employees and therefore on the on their morale on their motivation it's very important that leadership of your company takes up the responsibility of being inspiring of being very positive in their attitude and also undertakes all actions with compassion and the second aspect to my mind is very important is the communication all our panelists also talked about communicating communicating in a very timely precisely transparent way is very very important you are able to if you are able to put thought why these actions were taken what is the rational behind that you can also say that in the changed conditions the roles have to be different maybe modified for uh, if not all certain levels of employees why they need to take up more roles different roles that's very important you also have to communicate to remove misinformation which is a very prevalent we have seen uh, more than 50% of the messages in whatsapp are all fake actually uh, how do you remove the uh, anxiety in the in the people in the employees remove the misinformation and most importantly prepare them mentally to take up more challenging jobs 
I think they may, in this way, they may be more prepared to take larger role and also would have more capability and capacity to undertake um, unprecedented changes, issues, or maybe a shock on this. I think that's very important. And the last I think thing is to keep them engaged. Engaged employees are the best assets, actually. You need to keep them engaged, engaged in positive things. It could be learning, as uh, Mr. Mahapatra said, it is the best time to really uh, motivate them to take up fresh learning and utilize this learning for and prepare them for the role maybe two, three years from now. What is changing? Because I feel technology will play a more role way of working uh, in the future would be different. Workplace would be different. Um, communication would be different. So prepare them uh, for a new kind of working style, new kind of a workplace and, uh, and, and decision making actually. That's very important. We all hope that if all organizations that we have shared, you have shared your initiatives and if we take care of these uh, things, uh, the, the top leadership, uh, the communication, the engagement aspects of that. I hope that uh, organization would be in a much better position to uh, overcome the challenges uh, being faced now. And we really sincerely hope that this COVID um, pandemic ends as soon as possible and the normal business uh, 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 activities start. Uh, we really hope so that. Uh, on that note, I think, uh, Dr. Sahu, we can take up yeah. some questions now. Yeah, a few uh, minutes are there, and uh, there are certain questions which are uh, uh, repeated. So I am uh, one of the person, Mr. Pravan Kumar, is talking, asking a question on payments. So I have unmuted, Mr. Pravan Kumar. Please carry on your question. Payment to contract levels, Mr. Pravan Kumar. Hello. Hello. Ah, Mr. Kumar. Yeah, please. Put the question to the panelists. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon to all panelists. It was uh, very nice to hear all the stalwarts of industry. And particularly, this is a good platform uh, because manufacturing is completely different than IT. Now, uh, I am a CGM personnel from Steel Authority. And here also, we face this difficulty. The suddenly COVID happened and we had to like uh, suddenly put our operations on hold. Then the blast furnace and coke ovens were running at 50% uh, of uh, the capacity. So uh, all of employees uh, our kind of uh, lined up for this job. Now, my question is, okay, these two months we have passed, we have paid uh, money to our employees, we have um, uh, made all payments to our employees, even contractors have paid uh, payments to their uh, contract workers. Now, we cannot sustain making payment continuously for longer period because COVID is going to be here. Now, what will happen uh, in future? When industry cannot sustain this, how to, how to make such systems where we'll be making payment only to those who are coming, who are, who are getting utilized and not to others and how to retain them, how to keep them motivated. Another aspect related to this is uh, our incentive schemes. Our incentive schemes are linked to certain level of productions. We have not been able to make production, but still the kind of um, uh, uh, this uh, hostry mill and uh, pokoens and blast furnace, even to reduce the production manpower was required. But this time we have been make, we have been able to make some changes in incentive schemes, but long term we'll have to think of. They will be off and on. Now suddenly the demand came from China and then we had to run our host trip mill. Now suddenly we required manpower and suddenly we don't require manpower. This situation is there, going to be there uh, in near future. How to deal with such situation, particularly in manufacturing? Yes. That is my question to all panelists, please. I think I'll um, respond first and take up this question on the first thing Pawan is that um, if you as I said if you transparently discuss with your people and and uh, put forward the uncertainty of the business situation then many majority of them would understand what are the problems why they are their problems and they would be in a better position to under underestimate. Uh, I mean, the estimate the the problems and the impact of the problem, the magnitude of the problem. So I think first is to really transparently talk to them and and share the information on that. Uh, as you know, the Government of India initiative uh, for a kind of a directive that uh, the organizations must continue to pay 
Um, I think we are not in a position to right now to predict, as I said, the companies are not even able to plan when and what investment should be made uh, in the organization. So I think this uncertainty may continue for some more time. But if your business is sustaining, if you are still working at 50% of your capacity, I think you are much better off than many other organizations which are uh, more or less closed on that. Uh, maybe you have to perhaps uh, 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 grade the payment uh, according to the productivity, as I said. And if you are transparently putting it forward that this is the total productivity in a, in a new scenario, new analysis, I think you can convince people that this problem is going to there for a short time and we'll be back on a normal working. I think this communication has to be very candidly put forward and discussed on that. Mr. Mahapatra, you like to uh, yeah. add on on this? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I think uh, the initial directive which was there for paying it to contractors was a temporary directive. It was given because we do not face problems, at least the, the people there do not face problems. I think you must be already knowing that that has already been withdrawn now. That is no more available, applicable because it was a choice between life and livelihood at that point of time. And uh, we had to make that, uh, I mean, as, as most of these uh, bigger organizations, we had to really come forward and make that sacrifice to make it happen. So that is one part of it. Uh, now onwards, when it's all coming back to normalcy. It will be on the basis of actual happenings, which is a, which is going to take place. Second thing, yes, uh, Pawanji, I think uh, uh, when initially all of us spoke spoke about that unprecedented situations require unprecedented response, and now these all are also giving us some uh, some uh, ways or some leeway leeways of thinking about it. Earlier we thought that in manufacturing industries there cannot be any gig work. But probably this is already giving us a feedback that yes, it's possible to have a gig working, I mean, in manufacturing industries as well. And I know it's very easy to say, particularly in organizations like ours, where so many other elements are in the force, it's very easy to say, difficult to do. But these are the this is the time which is pushing us to do those difficult things. I think these are the new models which should be evolving. And I agree with Mr. Bali and we, when he say it all can happen now if you engage with people, you discuss with people. Everybody realizes that this is a situation which is not going to happen for this period only. It is going to redefine the way yes. we are going to perform in future. If we don't realize, if we don't become agile, you don't adapt to this situation, we may not survive. So I think, I think probably that discussion, that engagement need to start. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, uh, uh, Ms. Ankita Sood, uh, she's asking about the role of uh, uh, female uh, employees. And uh, I request Ankita Ji, please, uh, uh, I'm unmuting you. Please put the question. Hello, everyone. Yeah, Hello. we are, we are listening. Yeah. Hello everyone. Sir, my question is that in current scenario, we are focusing on different working style that is we are focusing on work from home practices. So in this scenario, how it would be possible to maintain the work life balance? Would that be a big challenge? And especially I would be quoting female workers as the expectations from them are to balance the work life and their family life also. So how we will uh, deal with this challenge of balancing both the portions of life in this current crisis? So I think I'll, I'll make some initial points and then request uh, our um, technology expert, Mr. Prasad Rajapan to also put in. Now, I think as far as work from home for women is, to my understanding, is a preferred option. I, I see my, my nieces, daughters, daughter-in-laws all, all working from work from home. And I think they are in a much better position to really not only work effectively with a lot of uh, comfort, uh, but also at the same time being able to manage few things uh, at home. So I think they are, to my mind, it is a preferred uh, perhaps option for women workers 
to opt for work from home. Um, and I see their effectivity, their productivity, uh, their quality of work is no less than what they work in the normal office. Uh, so I, I feel there's absolutely no problem. And I believe that women are much better managers in terms of their time management, multi-skilling, that they really make use of this work from home uh, opportunity. Mr. Prasad, would like to add on? Yeah, just to add on a lighter note, uh, it's a good opportunity to make your spouse multi skilled Yeah, so, <laughs> so you, they can share your notes. But on a serious note, I think uh, we are working with the industry to come out with guidelines. See, earlier work from home was only for IT industry, and you know where the uh, things were being laid down. I think we are working with uh, uh, the industry. We'll collaborate with NIBM also to come out with work from home guidelines for women, for even for men. You know, what are the timing, what are the expectations, how do we monitor? I think it's very essential now and it's imperative. It's not an option now. So I think soon you'll find some handbook. I think maybe we'll have to share once we collaborate and give it to you. I'm sure that in coming time, uh, you will find more and more people opting for work from home. And I think uh, with the guidelines there, the, the, the technology helping them uh, in, a, in a big way, uh, they would be as effective, as productive as in a Thank normal you. office. So, Mahapata, want to say something? Yeah, yeah you want I to, just yeah. want to add. And in yeah. fact, I, I am with um, Ankita, Ankita Ji in her uh, saying this. I know where the pain is coming from. The current experience of work from, has, from home has been bad. I must tell you this. I mean, and uh, I have told everywhere that this work from home which is happening currently is not the regular work from home which should happen in future. At least this experience should not be taken. I know, particularly the female employees are facing adequate problems because they, and we have just assumed at this point of time that everybody is working from home means is he or she is available for 24 hours and all seven days because we all are locked down at home. Probably what uh, Dr. Balian told, what uh, Mr. Prasad ji has also told, Future is going to change. It, it is not different. It has to be different. It has to be redefined. There has to be a clear cut balance between work and family and life. It has to be there at work from home. Also, it has to be there. And I can understand your pain. I mean, there are many of my employees. I think a few of them are attending right now. They have been telling me, sir, office ka open karwa rahe hain. Hum office jana chahte hain. So this is how it is. But but this is not that experience. We should be carried on for future for future of work from home. Yeah. Uh, another question is on uh, uh, critical competencies required, which is Yaswant Chauhan. Mr. Chauhan, Mr. Chauhan, yes. please go on. Uh, a very good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you for your great inputs. Uh, you know, coming from the leaders from industry, it is a great uh, experience. Uh, so my question to the panel is that uh, uh, we, as a function, are moving from a personal function to a business driving function, right? So uh, keeping in view of the current COVID scenario, how do you see the role of HR emerging uh, into, you know, into a function which will uh, ensure the business productivity? And at the same time, it will also ensure the workers' rights and safety uh, at, at large, you know? Uh, so obviously the leaders have a larger responsibility of maintaining the high trust quotient. So in that context, I just want to understand what are the critical competencies which would be required to uh, to make uh, the HR function take the center stage at the board level. Thank you. I think from the uh, HR competencies uh, part of you to see, um, the first thing would be that um, how do you deal with uncertainty? Uh, that kind of thing. Do you have people who are comfortable to work in uncertainty? Uh, how do you create people uh, and transform them into uh, who can who can manage uncertainty without any problem with ease? I think so. One is that to 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 really be able to uh, manage uncertainty. That's one com major competency that would be required. Uh, number two and uh, would be that how do you predict actually? predictability, what changes are coming, uh, what changes are happening. In fact, all of us uh, are very slow to 
uh, identify the changes that are happening, and there are changes that are happening every time, you know, even now. COVID has only hastened the process so fast that everybody is uh, uh, sort of taken by back. But changes do happen. How do you predict that what is change are going to happen? Most of the organizations do not have people to really predict and uh, major organizations, bigger organizations, thinking organizations have come up with uh, new positions which uh, 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 help them in predictability. So if you have competencies related to um, predictability, managing uncertainty, um, managing volatility, uh, managing change, rapid change, not just the change, rapid change in work environment, work style, changing the structure of the organization. I think HR has a full plate now in the coming years. You want to yeah. add on, uh, 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 Mr. Rajapan, you want to add something? See, I just want to give an analogy. It's like you are, you are a huge building and there's an earthquake and it's all, it has gone haywire. You have an option to tinker with it or build a new one. And while you build a new one, put only those things which are essential. Because in the old house, you had a lot of things which you were never using. Like you use a lot of things in the house. So HR has the option now, like um, Shalem was saying, to restructure. Okay. To restructure and think differently, like we call the word outcome mission. Do only what is going to give the outcome for you, the employees, and the company. I think that you won't believe yourself, you'll be able to create magic. Believe me, actually, if you really do zero based thinking, you can create magic. Don't add on something. Yeah, uh, there is another question. You're, you're telling me, sir? Oh, VK Singh Sab. Uh, oh, VK Singh Sab, yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to st reply to him that he, uh, he asked uh, that when HR will take center stage, actually. For the last <laughs> 20 years, I'm listening this answer <laughs> when HR will take center. It has always been in the center stage and it is always take, actually. So don't worry, if you are able to handle uncertainty, if you are able to anticipate, you will be very business enabled, actually. So don't ever think that you are not at center stage, actually. This thing. But once you find it very difficult to pinpoint to who is the HR person in the organization, yes, absolutely. I think we have the right uh, environment there, you know. So never ever think that you are not at center stage. You're always at center stage. Yeah. Right. Sir. Yeah. yeah. Next uh, question. An another, another question from Ar Ms. Archana Yala, um, Yala Pantulu. I am unmuting Archana ji, please uh, come to, uh, with a question. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, my question is to the panelists. How, what are the uh, competencies? I mean, most of them have been answered after I raised my question. But what are the competencies which an HR professional is required to have in post-COVID scenario? Because post-COVID things are going to be, of course, with all, with all these digital changes taking place, a uh, lot of lot of things have changed now how hr the competencies what are the new competencies which hr professionals need to have to handle the new situation well archana i think what we talked in the last question also what yes, covid sir. has uh, uh, what we have learned from covid is number one uh, and uh, mr mahapatra also talked about it how do you make your team uh, adapt to new way of working Number two, how quick you are there with your team to change agility? And how comfortable are you with the change? Um, people do get perturbed when there is a change because there are people who have been working in one particular style for 10 years. They say, I am the expert. I have been doing it for 10 years and uh, nobody else be knows better than me. But in the change scenario, everything has to change. So how do you create that positive uh, thought that nothing is permanent? You need to change to the uh, environment. So those competencies, again, which are related to change management, uncertainty, predictability, agility, and also, to my mind, I think a new leadership, to my mind, I'll again put back that leadership in crisis is different. Many leaders fail under the crisis. So we need to develop leaders and leaders at all levels. I'm not just talking about the top level, uh, management level. Leaders who are comfortable 
to work under crisis under change under uncertainty those competencies to my mind are going to be most important in coming future yeah uh, sir next question uh, is from dr habe i think he is there or not i am uh, not able to see by putting but his question is in the era of work from home preferences what will be the future for hr and how nipm can play leadership role in present situation and do you see any turbulence in ir scenario in post covid situation if uh, dr bhabe is there he can raise the hand i think he's uh, i'm not finding him anyway this is his question sir i think as far as the work from home is concerned uh, i would again say mr prasad has answered uh, this thing anything else that you want to add mr prasad on this question i think, I think uh, with the work from home whether so physical meetings and less more i think the best service i'm talking as a non hr person i'm not a hr person in that sense the biggest service hr can do to make hr as a trait in each manager and not keep it as a department if hr can really make it so those values like you said of the competencies you can make it as a trait in each manager your work is done and it's right. very important especially when work from home you're not going to be seen you can't go and direct but if you can create that culture of caring competency from Correct. into managers it will, it will be great so i think uh, creating that new culture and actually the practicing hr professional are all functionaries you know mm -hmm. so make them uh, you know sensitive to hr values systems uh, working style on that mm -hmm. i think that's more important uh, mm -hmm. but from the ir point of view yeah. uh, anybody uh, mohapata ji want to say anything I I just wanted to add. I've been combining both these questions which Archana asked and this question. I mean, they're related. I always say it is HR for HR. Now the competencies will be three A's, triple A's: adaptability, agility, and alignment. Alignment with business. This three has to be there in full, full uh, display at every point of time. Right. Whether right. whether we are doing for work from home and how do we design our systems. or any activities because there will be a lot of changes which will be taking place unless we do that it's very difficult yeah i think yeah. that was a very interesting sentence dr bali can i just add a sentence yeah i think yeah. Uh, just, just a moment the challenge the challenge i'm just opening it uh, opening it uh, invitation to the hr people if they can say because of my, this activity i've been able to raise the top line of this company or impact the bottom line i think that is the opportunity Correct. so what do you do has to impact the outcomes of the company so i mean the purpose is actually if the hr person is able to identify himself or herself in the entire business uh, circle absolutely that here i am adding that value or not adding if they are able to identify that thing the job is done actually uh, yeah. now just one point an interesting point on this uh, was of the ir angle industrial yeah. relations i think that's one thing that we have not really uh, taken note of that uh, i certainly feel that uh, with the substantial workforce working from home the flavor of industrial relations would undergo some change mm. now uh, physical presence at one point and distributed present at home may be different so we are not able to really reassess right now uh, but i think this is one thing that we can think about what what kind of uh, issues can come up in the industrial relations once a, say maybe around one third of the workforce is working from home what kind of uh, situation i think this is an interesting thing we'll we'll ponder over it yeah uh, so can i can i can i can uh, uh, we are up on time uh, of how Yeah, I, th I think uh, only one question you can take from uh, Dr. Zohari Lal. He's our past president. Uh, he's I am unmuting uh, him. Uh, Dr. Lal, Zohari Lal, please. Hello. I couldn't see him. Yeah. Um, uh, I think he's there. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, welcome, sir. Uh, I think. Uh, he is uh, not able to i think some issues anyway sir another uh, question uh, from dr rajudan i am taking to that to him he is asking with regard to 
educational institutes uh, i am unmuting him one second sir after that okay i am reading his question ah yeah dr raju oh he is not there anyway his question is what type of skills and attitudes are required for future workforce and how teaching community and educational institutions should reinvent themselves post covid <coughs> uh, i think that he has raised a important question about the <coughs> role of uh, academia and i i strongly feel that uh, academia needs needs to work uh, in very closely with the industry to to really be updated on the curriculum i think with the these kind of rapid changes the curriculum would require some additional inputs for for our uh, uh, people like the mba um, uh, students and be candidates to to be able to deal with such kind of situations and all so certainly uh, academia uh, has to play come back with with their recommendations to prepare uh, better prepare the the uh, the the students to take up such kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, working in such kind of environment in in the industry Uh, I think that's the last question, sir. Uh, there are other questions, but uh, again, I would have loved to go. <laughs> I would love to carry on. So, uh, more questions, Dr. Sahu. I would like that you can make note of that and you can email us, and then we'll be happy to respond to that. At this point in time, uh, yes, before handing over to Dr. Sahu, I like to thank my panelists very sincerely. Wonderful job done, uh, Mahapatar Sahab, Singh Sahab, and uh, Mr. Rajapan. i look forward to be again sometime later on 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 some forum thank you very much for all of you thank and you. all the participants thank you so much mr kulkarni thank you very much thank uh, you. being part of thank this. you very much thank you thank you thank you very much sir it's a, uh, we 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 don't have uh, words sir to express our gratitude to such elite and learned uh, uh, panelist and uh, with short notice it was actually two days back it was uh, all we contacted you and uh, we we are indebted to you uh, the four panelists uh, that uh, you have really made us uh, proud and uh, made us uh, feel like homely you are even if in the crisis uh, you are there to support us uh, through this knowledge sharing so uh, our special thanks gratitude goes to the moderator moder moderator and leader dr alian sahab and uh, uh, what a wonderful moderation you have done sir and uh, uh, rangan mahapatra sir and uh, mr dk singh sir or and uh, mr prasad sir it is excellent uh, input and i've got also some of the feedbacks thank you sir wonderful and uh, we will be doing uh, so many interactions again sir we will be inviting you and uh, we are grateful to our national president he has been always uh, a very very support of course he is a host so i am not giving <laughs> the whole <laughs> additional credit <laughs> he is the host here and uh, we have no words to express our thanks to all our participants and wonderfully they have very in a in a effective and disciplined way we we are able to uh, conduct this uh, webinar and we plan next week uh, uh, again on the issue of maybe migrant labor will be another uh, input and this uh, 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 this uh, wonderful uh, afternoon uh, has been uh, made a very fantastic learning time sir thank you thank, thank you, you very much to all national thank council you. Thank, thank you sir all members thank, thank you thank you very much thank you thank you everyone